Hi, my name is Adeolu Adepoju. I'm here to discuss frozen food business. Some time ago, um, my wife and I decided that we we're going to have a very, very prestigious frozen food center in Lagos. That is coming from the background of somebody who has lived a chunk of her life abroad and knows how best things are done in terms of f food production and um, frozen food business. Of course, we had this dream of having one of the largest chain of um, food business in Nigeria. We had the plan to sell fresh beef, um, fresh pork, lamb, steaks, um, goat meat, etc. Poultry, um, fish, and all those stuff. So what did we do? We first of all went back to the UK. We brought in some chillers heavy ones, the large ones, I hope you understand what I mean. We bought the electric saw, the one that can slice in, even cut through bones with ease and neat, so that at the end of the day, you have equal chunks of meat. Of course, we brought in the electric um, electronic scales, we brought in the manual ones, we brought in nylon sealers and every other thing you can think about in terms of that business. Now, with the energy and the zeal to kick off something that looks like a very promising dream, we went on board with um, our business ideas and proposals, we wrote in the business stating how much we are expecting to realize in a certain period of time? What period do we expect a break even? What period do we expect to start making profits? Yeah, isn't that a very beautiful dream? Won't you ask yourself? Won't you ask every other person? It looks nice because if you want to start a business and you're going to be spending about let's say about 1.2 million naira as of that time because a chiller then cost about 350,000 naira the electric saw was about 80,000 the sealer, the small one, about 15, 10, 20,000 depending on how much money you have and of course you buy the, mater the raw materials like the nylon and then you start looking for a place to be now we set out some amount of money as capital for the business and um, we said okay we have so, so amount of money let us kick off with this area at Ogba in Lagos we paid in the money for I think it was two years rent and of course in the press of searching for a, a very good place we managed to get a place on the road because our target then was that it must be open to the traffic so we got a place just on that um Ogbai Jaye road we felt it was okay there were banks not far off thinking that our customers should be corporate people who will appreciate things like that so what did we do next after the payment we set in so no longer after we set in we got delivery of about 200 uh, whiteboards that's chicken they call it broiler so and um, we placed the chickens in one of the shops that's the inlet of the shop but before the day was over the landlady that's the house owner rushed down to us that it's impossible how can you put in um, poultry where people live that she wasn't going to tolerate it that we had to take it out to cut the story short we started looking for alternative shops we got one at Anthony 
um, Anthony Bostop, that's the one around Bagada. Then we set up the place, put um, got the um, the rent. I think we paid for was it two years or three years. Then the shop we had to renovate the shop. Don't forget that we also had to renovate the shop at Ogba before it was habitable. And when I mean renovate, when I say renovate, what I mean is that you change the tiles, you change the the, the windows, you change the electricals, you change your you buy your new bulbs. You repaint the walls and you introduce your sink, that's your water system because you need a lot of water. You secured a waste disposal um, system, you secured um, your water system, pure that's pure water system and all those stuff. So then the next thing will be to kick off the business. Now, outside the business, the first thing we observed is that market wasn't very stable that is you get your market from k2 you get some from uh, agege you you mix you know all those all those things together you buy croaker here and there so you reprocess you repackage the pro the products you buy your chickens you repackage your chickens you cut them very well my wife was very, very, very zealous. She would go extra miles to Kara Market to get um, half goat meat. That's um, buy a piece of a big chunk of cow. That's beef. Then you take it and hang it on the hangers in the shop for people to come over. And when those products are displayed, you know it's easy for people to appreciate what we have. But not long about a month into it we started having to face the reality of the business the first thing that we did not envisage about the whole stuff was that government um government um actions um la sema visited us severally that we must pay for the signage we, we did that um lock up that local local councils were there to say you haven't paid for your lock up shops we paid the tax and some guys would come and say you need to um, pay for your business business names and blah blah, blah. you need to do that and then the sanitation people will come over and say you need to pay for sanitation because you are pr you are bound to dispose of your refuse on the road and all this stuff then um, then of course neighbors we had hostile neighbors, very, very hostile neighbors. What of it, one of the things we did not consider before we moved in is that the rate of rent of those shops so high that because we were starting a new business, we never thought about it. That how about the people that were staying here before? Has there ever been any business who had been in this shop or this premise before that actually after the initial tenure of two years or three years? that still retain the shop. We never had that question, which is very key. Because there's no how you can pay about 250,000 Naira then, as far back as 2010, 250,000 Naira per annum, and you expect that, that is breaking into about 20,000 Naira a month. And you're expecting that somebody who is a seamstress or a fashion designer, or who has a canteen, can make a turnover and have a profit of 20,000 Naira to pay per month to a landlord for accommodation of that business. There are a lot of things that business startups don't think about when they're starting up their businesses, which unfortunately I was part, I was a victim, and I was a victim of it. Another thing we did never consider was that the, the staff, who is going to manage the place when you're not there? Are you going to be there 24 seven? Because if you are there, who's going to develop new businesses? So we thought about it that, okay, while we're developing new businesses, let somebody be like a salesperson, a sales representative at the shop to at least monitor the events and make sales in our absence, whether we are there or we are not there. The first thing for us is that, see, there is no way you can get good labor except there's an organized labor. What I mean by organized labor is that let's, let, let's assume that there's an agency that um, deals with recruitment of, of unskilled laborers. Let's say a company can start up and say, okay, I'll, I'll kick off with the 
that's um, recruitment, that's training, recruitment and training of artisans that cannot be posted to businesses who require them. But then there was nothing of such, so you had to scout for your own salesperson by yourself. And of course, let me tell you something 95% of people you will get, they are thieves, they are rogues, they don't want your business to grow, they don't care about your business, all they care about is their money, their salaries at the end of the month. And another thing they care about is that how much money can they make off you on a daily basis. That is very key. Once you close your eyes, believe me, they are stealing from you. There are several ways which they can steal from you. Several ways. You have to um, find out by yourself and um, find a way of blocking those um, loopholes. Some of the ways they can steal from you is that they may not make sense for you. They may drive away your customers. They may be so rude to customers and they don't care. They don't give a damn. It's not their business anyway. So, oh, what, what, what the heck? So, they drive away your customers. They, they, buy, they drive away your revenue. So, you don't have any means of controlling that except you are physically there and do what we call damage control. Another thing we did not consider was uh, fluctuating power supply. Because you are dealing with frozen food, it's very sensitive, has expiry, very, 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 very strong expiry, as in short expiry. So you have to keep your foods all at all times frozen. What that means is that you need to buy a generator good enough to power your, your freezers and your AC. Now, what that means is that you'll be burning extra, for, extra money on fuel which you might not have thought about is key that you key into this kind of advice think about your power supply think about your staff it's very critical that you must think about those two things if you don't you are not in good business now what happens next is that before you kick off your business also take care of all these government agencies give what belongs to caesar to caesar pay all your tithes all your all your taxes ahead the government does not care about you as a startup. Naturally, there should be a kind of leave, tax leave for you for maybe for a period of six months, one year, before government will start disturbing you because they are the ones who say they want to employ people. They want to get people out of the streets. Now, you, because you have little money to start up, you are employing people, taking away some of the people that the government ought to have taken out of the street. You are helping the government to take them out. But the government doesn't care about that. They don't care. All they care about is how much money they can make from you. They don't care if your business survives or if it doesn't survive. If it doesn't survive, it doesn't have any effect on them. If it survives, it doesn't have any effect on them. In fact, it's better that your business survives because they'll be coming to you, but they don't realize that all they care about is the initial money they're going to make from you. Now, what happens next is that we have to start... Um, another thing we do not consider was the fluctuation in uh, prices. You go to one cold room today, you tell you a croca package of croca that's 10 kg was about 6,000 something. By the time you go back the next week or next month, it's about 7,000 something. By the time you go back again, it keeps rising, 10,000, all those stuff. So you have to consider all those that, all those things. Now, one thing is that after, after a period of about 8 months, my wife was able to break through um, a cartel of people who import um, and seafood so we were able to get that on a papa so from a papa we we're getting our own direct allocation from the ships and um, that's through the help of some guys in the ministry and um, we we're able we even we had a deal with some chinese guys who requested for a particular type of fish so all that we were required of was to have a cold room and they will get the fish to us and they will come and pick them up from us so within a period of one year, we were able to grow the business. But one thing that was starting is this. The business died several times in the period of one year. But what sustained us was because there was enough money to pump into the business to nurture it. So that brings us back to the initial statement which I made in other previous uh, videos that you do not keep all your money into start up a business. It's good to, to dream big. It's very nice to dream big. But however big you have, you, your dream is, if your dream is not scary, it's not good dream. So if your dream is big enough, that's when it is good. However, you don't put all your money into a business that you're just starting up. What you do 
is to keep a chunk of it in a bank or in a savings or a frozen somewhere and learn the trade step by step as you grow the business will be requesting for that money which you have kept somewhere so you need to go back to the savings and get the monies out for that business once the money is out for the business after a period of time the business will be comfortable the business will be able to retain and sustain itself and be able to move on part of the things that we did was to think out of the box out of the box means that are we just a roadside um a food seller is that what we want to be of course not that's not what we want to be that's not the plan the plan is to have a chain of businesses supply chain of businesses so we have to start opening up the supply channels you have to painstakingly go through all the rigors of talking to hoteliers talking to supermarket owners talking to um other food joints restaurants and all this stuff to make supply you go into the bush to look for the cheapest eggs which you can supply at the smallest little the little the smallest margin but you gain your money in turnover that's at rate at which you can turn the money over and over so we're able to achieve that so my advice to people who are going into food uh, frozen food business is this number one do not cite your shop because you found a shop on the road means that is good that is not an answer it is not a solution look for a residential place however small that place is a place that people are still moving till 9 10 in the night 9 pm or 10 pm that is the ideal place for you to site your, your shop set your shop on the road or the streets on the side of the road that people take when they are driving home not when they are driving out when they are driving home that is the um, ideal place for you to set your your frozen uh, food business now when you get that you do not need an elaborate you do not need an elaborate um, shop you, you, all that you need is just a container a, a, a space that can take in your freezers that can take in your your cutters your slicers your chillers and all this stuff let me tell you one one hint let me give you a hint of what happened because um we were there and then um, of course you were staying there you needed to to have some things to be eating by yourself you need to have food around you, you need to have drinks so my wife will put in a bag of pure water in the in the freezer and then um, to our surprise people were requesting for this pure water and until somebody just asked Asked, why don't you start selling this water why are you giving it out free because we were giving that as complimentary before I said no you can sell it you'll be surprised about you'll be amazed about the amount of money you make of it so what did we do we started selling the pure water and I tell you I tell you the pure water business was very profitable we're not spending any extra money on freezing or oh, you already have the freezer of course the freezer is there all you just need to do is to put the water in it and that's bingo after some time, people will start requesting for drinks. People will start requesting for um, seasonings. People will start requesting for um, packaged food like um, powdered yam and uh, you know beans, all of this stuff. So that is where your innovation now comes. Because what that means is that the business is already creating enough awareness. People are already knowing that you exist there. So when people start knowing that you are existing, they will start asking for things that will make them more comfortable. So you have to listen. Listen very well to what they ask. So it is from what they ask that you'll be able to design the new and package new products for them. You'll be so shocked that you 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 started up with the intention of of um, of selling frozen chicken and um, uh, poultry. You find that you end up selling seafood mix. You end up selling. You end up being the major in, in, the major income or source of income that you may you will have. Maybe full stuff. Maybe maybe tomato paste maybe yam can be rice so the, the market will be telling you what to do and you keep listening don't be rigid don't be rigid and say oh this is my brand are you stick to your brand yeah make your brand <laughs> flexible make your brand uh, mobile let it be flexible enough for people to be able to access you and for you to be able to understand the needs of your customers remember customer is king and 
they consume what they want is not what you want them to consume they will tell you what they want to consume so on this note i'll tell you take this advice very seriously for these people especially people who want to start up um frozen food business please take this very 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 careful um you can start your business very close to a marketplace because people will naturally go to the market to buy things for themselves so start your business close to the marketplace or start your business close to your house a residential place that you can easily stroll down and all this stuff then um, pay your utility bills take it take that into consideration um, buy new products new freezers don't use old ones if you use old ones what you don't know about it is that old technologies consume a lot of energy new technologies consume less so in order for you to to reduce the cost of um, um, powering your equipment is good to buy energy efficient power efficient equipment or tools or uh, facilities that will save you a lot of money at the end of the day you may not see it initially but i tell you what it's actually very very cost effective because with your little generator of about 3.5 kv you should be able to power up your deep freezers two of them if they are good and they are energy efficient they, 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 will, they, will, they will do you good and another thing is that try to register with um, people who can supply you so it is okay initially when you're starting up you have to look for the suppliers but as you grow you have to look for people who can actually supply you go to the source don't do don't go to people who will sell and make profits before selling to you go to the source try and find out where they get their own products from to join the association join the association of people who buy from the source register with the source if you are selling frozen food register with potries who oh, you know that they will be disposing of their um, um, poultry um, anytime then um, register with uh, fishing companies if it's possible if that's if you want to make it big if you don't want to remain a roadside person register with all those people then get your market very correctly there are two types of markets markets that will come to you and market that you will go to however whichever one you need good packaging Create a package, a, a branding system for yourself, a branding packaging for yourself with good labels and be neat. Be courteous to your customers and um, be persistent. Initially, you will not make it too quickly, but once the awareness is there, you will start making it. But let me tell you another thing. Once you do something that is very beautiful in this part of the world, even outside of the, this part of the world, everywhere you go, there's something that is peculiar to businesses competition. Competition will always find you out. Competition will always find you out and try to overtake you. If you are not, if you are not fast enough, competition will always overtake you. You will be so shocked that people who come to you as customers, they are coming to make inquiries, direct or indirect inquiries about your businesses. So they will come to ask you this and that and that and that. It's not because they love you; it's because that they want to learn on how you're doing yours, how you uh, they try to imagine how much money that you have in, that you are making in sales. So once they get that, you'll be so shocked and they find out that the place that you are selling is very profitable. You'll be so shocked that the next shop to you will be your competitor. That, 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 that's, from, that's a fact, that's from experience. I know that very well. So you have to think far, far, far ahead of competition. So you need also need to identify the people who consume your product you can package your food and have a delivery system if you have a good website if you have a good um, information uh, medium you can actually have a very good delivery system where people call in to request for so 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 but if you have to go into a delivery system like that please you have to be very honest because customers are very sensitive to prices and quality so you have to be very honest if you are selling something for one kg don't cheat let your one kg be one kg let your half kg be half kg. Don't cheat. But once customers observe this, they will tell. They may not tell you. It's not every customer that will come and tell you, give you feedback about your product. A lot of them will just shy away and just walk away like that. It's only the ones that love you that will come back to you and ask you, why did you do this? Or, or, or give you a query. Anybody who gives you a query loves you, wants you to survive. The many people don't care about your business. Only you must care about your business. So one of the things you must do is that make sure that your needs sure that you don't cheat your prices are correct your pricing is correct no don't no cheating and make sure that you're getting trusted people to mind your business when you're not there 
in fact find a way which you can use to manage your system whether you are online or you are offline you should be able to manage your system know what your, uh, your business is doing when you are there or when you're not there have a very very good system of bookkeeping anything that comes into your business any money you make every money you make must be recorded and every money you spend must be recorded you must never never ever use part of the business money to eat or to spend on yourself otherwise you kill your business you kill yourself so if you are broke be broke don't say you are broke and your business has money that means you have money there's a difference your business is your business you are you let your business give you salaries or wages when it is time when it is ripe for, for it to do that but before then sorry you still have to be pumping the money to that business you cannot add your money your pocket money and your business money together in the same post in the same wallet no don't ever do that if you're going to pay for service on your business let it come from the business account if you make any money any money maybe wages let it go into your business account bookkeeping is very 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 essential it's very essential so uh, after after this video i hope um we've been able to learn one or two things from this video you'll be will be giving you more video on other jobs or um, possibility and before you start up a business what should you should think about and what you should not do don't make the same mistakes that other people have made you can learn from other people's experience you can learn from a mentors you can learn from people's experience make your research very well before you delve into the business you want to do and know the business very well before you go into it don't be shy learning from people you know you have to go back under the under the tutelage of some experienced people and learn how they did it to be successful with that i know that success is yours thank um, thank you but before you hang up this video please don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channels thank you and bye bye